If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Additionally, if you would like to request novels and access my Google Drive where I have 200 plus audiobooks, then you can join my Patreon, link is also provided in the description. Chapter 1 It was an ordinary morning, I got up early and got ready to go to school. I work as a foreign language teacher at a high school in my district. Although it has been 15 years since I started this profession, I love teaching as if it were my first day on the job. Because I love seeing the sparkle and joy in children's eyes when they learn something. When they understand what I am teaching them, it makes all my efforts worth it. As I live only few blocks away from the school, it takes me only few minutes to get there by car. As soon as I got out of my car, I was greeted with incessant and annoying sounds of construction. The cling-clang of hammers, drilling, and cranes moving made them the unholiest sounds ever to a teacher like me who is teaching kids who have the attention span of a fly. I really hated this construction annoyance, I didn't understand what kind of road work could take weeks not to mention right next to a school. Because of this noise, I could hardly even hear what I was saying most of the time. How can I expect the children to hear me? I sighed. Today I am the teacher on duty in the schoolyard, this task is like torture in the middle of the fall. I took my place at the school's front gate and watched the students rush into the school in a hurry. One of the students approached me with a worried expression and said, Good morning, Mr. Lisser. Good morning, Dylan. I greeted one of my students. Please, can we not have a quiz today? He asked pleadingly. At that, I disappointedly shook my head at him. It's not even a surprise quiz, Dylan. Didn't I tell you guys to study last week? I even told you when the exam will be and what topics it will cover. So no, we are going to have the quiz today. I said in my best teacher voice. Backslash he started walking into the school a little sullen. When the bell for the first period rang, I started walking towards the teacher's room. Today is one of my favorite days, since my first period is free, I can take my coffee and drink it comfortably without any rush. After taking my coffee, I sat in one of the armchairs and looked out the window. It was a lovely autumn morning, the leaves of the trees just outside the window carrying every shade of yellow and red, creating a painting-like landscape. I must have been so immersed in the scenery and lost in my thoughts that I didn't even feel how time flew. When the bell rang, Marking the end of the first period, I came to my senses and started walking towards the front yard. I was standing in front of the school gate so I could control both the backyard and the front yard at the same time. While taking another sip of my coffee, I looked out the school gate, and that's when I saw Emily. She is one of the freshmen and has a habit of forgetting the world around her when lost in her own thoughts. She is an intelligent girl, I mean brilliant. She is literally a genius but a scatterbrain at the same time. Looks like she is living in her own world again, and without looking at the road, she starts passing across. Sometimes I wonder what she's thinking in that head of hers. She didn't even realize I was waiting for her across the road right now. She was crossing the road slowly, without haste, while looking at the ground. Seeing this, I couldn't help but smile. Hoodunk. When I heard the horn, I was startled. Then I turned to the left and saw a huge truck honking loudly and coming towards her. How is it possible not to hear such an incessant honking? Was she deaf? She was still crossing in the middle of the road, and I don't know when I took action, but I found myself running toward her. I found myself jumping toward Emily while saying to myself, what the hell am I doing? I pushed her out of the way. And I don't remember what happened afterward. I was surrounded by darkness. I couldn't feel physical touch, hear any sound, or see any light. Did I just die? Is this the afterlife? If yes, I should cry out, false advertising. No, this is not the afterlife you speak of. This is the in-between. Ah, perhaps limbo would be a good word. Says some voice. I should have been startled. But it felt as though I was missing something. But still, I asked. Who are you? Oh nobody, just a random omnipotent being. Says the same voice, and everything gets very bright. I chuckled at the reversal of the situation. Nice. I couldn't see because of the dark, and now I'm blinded by the light. Sorry, I have a dramatic flare. Replied the being made out of light. Although it was very, unnecessarily, bright, but after getting used to it, it wasn't hurting my eyes. Actually, it was soothing to look at it. You can read my mind I said or thought. Of course I can, I am a god. You cannot converse with me because you don't have a physical body. You are just a wisp of soul, 
basically a floating ball of light. So I died I said, oh so calmly. Yab. Why am I so calm about it, I asked confused. Oh, I am the reason behind it. I took your free will partially so you wouldn't freak out about it. I can give you that back if you want, but I don't recommend it. You will freak out for weeks or months until you get used to this soul form. Emily, what happened to the girl? She lived, actually. That is the main reason you are here. What do you mean? You see, the girl you call Emily lived thanks to your sacrifice and gets to grow up and she invents a cure for a deadly epidemic. If you hadn't sacrificed yourself to save her, the cure would have come out too late, and it would have caused billions of deaths. Millions, you mean? No, with a B. So, when you saved her life, you indirectly saved the lives of two billion people because she dedicated her achievement to you too. So you get to share the good karma too. Do you know? I can only know what you think, I can't know what the future holds. I'm not omniscient. Then how do you know what Emily will invent? I don't, but a high god does, and they give missions to us lower gods. Does that mean there are more gods? And what is a high god? You are not that bright, are you? Didn't I say I'm a random omnipotent being? Of course, there are more gods, and as for the high gods or goddesses, they are called creation gods too. You don't have to know more. Let's get back to the business at hand. You have two options. First, you can go to heaven, or second, you can go to heaven after getting reincarnated in another world and doing a mission for us when the time comes. What kind of mission? Bringing balance to a world, some forces need to be stopped. Of course, for this purpose, we are going to give you two boons of power. Basically, I'm guaranteed to go to heaven, right? If you don't become a murderous psychopath in this life, then yes, you are. Okay, then I accept the mission. For my first boon, I want the powers of Superman without his weaknesses. You can't have that. Deadpan the being. The Rob added, I can't break the order of things. Then I want the authentication skill I said, undeterred. You can have an authentication skill, but not the one you are thinking of. You could have a version of it in which it will only know as much as you know, and your knowledge will be its limit. Why can't I have my version of it? As I said I'm a god that represents order. My kind can't break the world's order. I can only give you powers that exist in that world or could exist. Let's do it this way, I will make it so you can't think of powers you can't wish for. Rob snaps its fingers. What is your second boon? Asked the being as if it hadn't f asteriskied with my mind, again. I felt all the resistance I had against him leave my body. Hmm, then I wish to be a druid, I always wanted to have magical powers when I was little. Okay then, good luck, said the Rob, nonchalant as ever. Wait. But it was as if the Rob followed the creed of out of sight, out of mind. I started free falling so fast that my consciousness faded, and then came darkness again. Chapter 2 I slowly opened my eyes, and a momentary bout of intense light blinded me. As my eyes adjusted to the light, I began to look around. I was in a small, slightly cold room. There wasn't much furniture around. There was a bed, a small table, a chair, and a closet by the window. The bed I was on, rustled with every move I made because it was made with straw stuffed into a coarse fabric, which gave me a strange and unfamiliar feeling. My head was killing me. I had never had such a severe headache. When I reached for my head with my hand, I realized that my forehead was bandaged with a coarse cloth, and just then, the door of the room opened, and a woman entered the room. Oh, thank the old gods you woke up. We were all starting to think the worst. As I was just about to answer her, when a pain that would overshadow the headache I was already experiencing, hit my head. It felt like someone was hammering nails in my head. Memories and emotions I had never experienced began to flow into my head. These memories belonged to a five-year-old child. It was like the memories worth five years were trying to burrow into my brain in five seconds. My parents were both dead. My father was a knight in Winterfell serving Lord Stark and died in service while saving his life. My mother was a servant in the castle serving the Lord's family, but she passed away six months ago from a fever. And most importantly, my name is Ermer Drazzle. Wait a minute, Winterfell, Lord Stark. Sounds very familiar. Holy shit, I am in Game of Thrones, I am F asterisk Eid. Are you well, my dear? Asked the woman, worriedly. I'm okay. What was her name again? Right, 
Breeze. She was a friend of my mom, another servant in the keep. I needed to be calm right now. I can freak out later. I am well, Aunt Breeze. What happened to me? I asked in my childlike voice. Don't you remember you got kicked by a horse when you were trying to pet it? I think I vaguely remember ah, Aunt Breeze, I recalled that bit in embarrassment. I have a terrible headache, and I'm feeling exhausted. Can I lie down for a while? I asked, half feigning a headache. Oh of course, dear. I will leave. I just wanted to check you were well. She said standing up. She went to the door and said, have a good rest. And closed the door. Now I can freak out, silently. I thought. Holy shit, holy shit. I'm screwed. The ice zombies, the Boltons, and all the other nasty things that are coming. What am I going to do? I need to get ready. Don't freak out me. You have your powers. Yes. My powers. Let's see, I turned to the chair and said. Authenticate. I felt like something was flowing inside my chest, and the word chair appeared in front of me on a semi-transparent scroll in gold letters. Oh, hell no, you don't say, I didn't know it was a f asterisking chair. All right. Deep breaths. Let's try something else. I hope it works. I cursed internally. Status. I said very convincingly and, nothing happened. Curses. Authenticate the authentication skill. I growled again and I felt a flowing feeling inside my chest and words appeared in front of me in the same way. Authentication, skill useful to identify things. It compiles information that the user has learned, heard, or read. This is it, nothing else. Well, what did I expect? That is exactly what the Rob said. I mutter. Authenticate the Druid skill, I said in anticipation. Again, there was a flowing feeling inside my chest, and words appeared in front of me. Druid, grants the ability to cast spells, perform rituals, shapeshift, familiar sight, summoning, and controlling familiars. Exactly what I thought a druid would do, I said a little excited. Perseus. Again, there was a flowing feeling inside my chest, and a flame the size of a fingernail was lit in the palm of my hand. So Perseus means fire. What language is this? I have no idea, and I just know it means fire. I can't even start a campfire with this. This is smaller than a lighter flame. Well, at least I understood something. I suppose that flowing feeling inside me is magic. I complained. The flame was still flickering in my palm, and it was touching my palm, but it wasn't burning me. At least I'm immune to fire. I willed it to move, and it moved slowly for two to three feet away from me and flickered out of existence. Useless. I spat out. Perseus. A small flame appeared in my palm. I willed it to move around my hand and then moved it to my index finger. I chuckled grimly. Nice. I will never need a candle in my life because I'm the mighty candle man. Fear me mortals and dragons. Mwahaha. I started laughing like a madman. In this kind of situation, I was supposed to be overpowered as hell. This was supposed to be my boon and way to power. What the hell was this shit? I brought the flame on my finger to the candle on top of the table, and it was lit. Then I brought another finger next to the lit candle. Ah, it burns now. Welp, there goes my fire immunity. So no Targaryen cheats for me. At least it doesn't burn me as long as I hold the flames in my hand. Perseus. This time, I hold my other hand at half a meter distance and throw the flame at my other hand and... Ouch, that hurts. It'll burn the second it leaves my hand. Then let's try something else. Sylvian. A fingernail-sized piece of ice appeared in my hand, but this ice was not touching my palm like the flame. No, it was floating in the air without touching below, just above my palm. This wouldn't even cool down a drink. I thought bitterly. I suddenly started to feel very weak and staggered onto the bed. My consciousness began to fade, and I was on the verge of passing out. Then I felt a strong pull, like I was a fish on a fishing hook. It happened so fast, I never saw it coming. Chapter 3 When I opened my eyes, I saw a humanoid shape made out of light. Why did I pass out, and why are you in my dream? I'm not in your dream. Technically, you are dead. What? I didn't even live for one full day. Why did you put me in an orphan with a busted head? You wanted to be a druid, 
so I put you in a body with the most talent in arcane arts, and I said basically, you are dead. I didn't say you are dead. I pulled your soul back here. You have passed out because you have used all of your mana and entered a depleted state called mana deficiency. If you hadn't cast the last spell, nothing would have happened. But when you use all of your mana, you will pass out immediately. You have to rest or meditate to replenish your mana. Then why am I here? At our first meeting, I had to give you two more boons if you accepted the condition, but I wanted to see your face when you realized you were in the Game of Thrones. It was hilarious. You can watch me in there. Yes, I can, but I can't get involved with the planet. But you pulled me. How did you do it then? In its core, your soul still doesn't belong to this planet, that's why I can pull you here before you pass out. Once you are asleep, I can't pull you. I might be able to get in touch with you in some holy places, but I can't even tell you where they are. You have to find it if you want to talk to me. So, let's get back to work. No, 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 not before I have my answers. Why did you give me broken powers? People get powers with broken scales in novels, and I literally got broken powers. I keep telling you, I am an order god. When are you going to get it? Most of the powers I can give you will become useful and powerful after you master them. Do you want more boons or not? What is the condition then? Your memories of the books and the TV series. Don't you want me to succeed in this mission? Why are you binding my feet? I want you to succeed, that is why I'm giving you boons. But to get something, you need to give something, an equivalent exchange is important. Let me think. I just realized something. You think yourself smart, don't you? What? You left a loophole. I will give my memories of the shows and the books, but the feelings stay like sixth since I started smirking. Okay, smart ass. You think you pulled one over, right? Do you think people listen to their inner voice and their senses? Nope. They ignore it almost always, and I'm betting you will not be any different. I'm pulling my loopholes too. You will not remember this deal and can only choose utility skills. I didn't say you can have any power you want, I just said I had to give you two more boons. Why do you keep trying to make it harder for me? I really don't f***ing understand you. The second I said that, the white light started to get dimmer and dimmer, and the rob started to get a bigger and darker silhouette. Get one thing in your thick skull I'm not your friend or you are not my equal, mortal. Let's make one thing clear I don't really care about you. Yes, I want you to succeed, but if you don't, I will be sad about it for a few years and completely forget about you. We gods neither need you mortals faith nor your worship, we are beyond that. How should I say so you would get it beyond a doubt? To us, you all are entertainment and pets, basically. Yes, some gods dote on their creation, like how a human would call their pet their child it is the same. But most of us love you as our pet, not as our child, and I'm not the latter one. Do you understand me? I started to nod my head feverishly. It was like a mountain was sitting on top of me for a second. Yes, my lord. He doesn't have a face, but I felt like he started to smile. Come on man, you don't need to be so stiff. You can just call me Rob. Let's get this over with. What is your first boon? If I have to master almost every skill, I want to have x5 experience in everything I do. Okay, it is possible. The most talented person who ever lived was the Dawn Emperor. He had 5x talent at ruling and magic. Cregan Stark and Dragon Knight were 4x, and Arthur Dane was 3x as a swordsman. What is your second one? If I'm going to have familiars, I want a closed dimension to train them without getting killed. It should have enemies I can train on. You will have a dimension you can train your familiars, but you can only stay there for six hours a day. You and your familiars will get healed when leaving the area. While you are inside, you cannot be killed, and if someone with hostile intents gets closer than four meters, you will be kicked out of the dimension. You can feel when someone gets close to you when you are inside. Lastly, nothing can enter the dimension but you and your familiars. Am I going to forget about all of this? Not all of it, you'll just forget about the deal and the planetos will seem like any random fantasy planet to you. Of course, you will have your sixth sense if you listen to it. After a prolonged feeling of falling, I jumped from my bed and woke up. I started looking around the room, feeling disorientated after a few minutes. I began to calm down and think about the new skills I got. Authenticate 5x skill. 5x, 
you will earn five times the experience you will get in anything you work on. If your base talent in that field is lower than zero, it will be plus five to your talent. Authenticate infinite training skill. Infinite training, there is a 4x4 meter room inside without any enemies. Comment. 51 Comment. Vote. Chapter 4, Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Authenticate infinite training skill. Infinite training, there is a 4x4 meter room inside without any enemies. There aren't any enemies inside, but Rob said there would be enemies to train on. I don't understand this, and why is it so small? How do I enter this space? I closed my eyes, focused, and thought of entering the space in my mind. I felt a flowing feeling inside, and it started to vibrate. When I opened my eyes, I was in a white room without any doors or windows. There is nothing here. What am I supposed to do? Is it empty because I don't have familiar yet? Right then, I started to feel like someone was getting close to me, but there wasn't anyone there. And I thought of what Rob said. Someone must have been close to my room. Right away, I focused and thought of getting out. After feeling vibrations, I opened my eyes and was in my room on the bed. The door opened, and Breeze came inside. Good morning. How are you feeling today, love? Do you still have a headache? I have a small headache but not as bad as yesterday. Are you hungry? Do you want to eat something? I nodded my head and said, yes. I got up from the bed, and we started to walk toward the keep's kitchen. It was a chilly morning. Like what would you expect from the north? When we arrived at the kitchen, many people were working in a hurry. It must have been close to the Time Lord, and his family breaks their fast. My stomach growled when I started to smell the pleasing aromas in the kitchen. Breeze started to chuckle when she heard my stomach growl. Honey, you know you can't have those. It is not for us, it is for the highborn. She pulled me into a corner and lifted me to a high chair. It was really humiliating getting lifted up like a baby, it will take some time to get used to asking for help for such easy things. She brought me a slice of cheese and a quarter loaf of bread. It is a modest breakfast, but at least I have something to eat. After eating, I decided to go outside. When I stepped out of the keep's service door, it took a few seconds for my eyes to get used to the light. I started walking around the keep inside the Winterfell. It is an enormous castle, if it was in my past world it would be one of the world's wonders. The keep alone was bigger than any castle I had seen on earth. I don't have much information about this world. I know of as much as a five-year-old boy would know. We live in Winterfell, the lord of the castle is called Eddard Stark, and we are called Northerners. That is all I know about the planet. I don't have to work because my father died while saving the lord, so I have some privileges the other small folk don't have. I can get three free meals a day until I'm sixteen. After that, I will be given a post in the keep if I want to. That is a no for me. I'm not going to waste my time serving lords while I have a mission. I don't even know what my mission is, he just said bringing balance and stopping some people when the time comes. One of my other privileges is being the playmate of the lord's son Rob Stark. It is a bit annoying because people keep telling me to lose to him when we play. It wasn't enjoyable for a five years old. Now I, a 35 year old man, need to do that. Thanks to my father's sacrifice, I have an easier life. I am still sad about it even though I never saw him before, but because this child's memories became my memories, I still miss him. I have short but fond memories of my father and mother, and those memories come with feelings. My father's name was Baron Snow. The child didn't know what a child of a bastard meant when people called him that. When this child asked his father what it meant, he just said, it means that I don't know who my father is. It is deplorable calling your child with another surname just because it is born out of wedlock. I'm a bit curious about it. Did he really didn't know who his father was or didn't want to say who he was? As for my mother, she has a surname too, and I got her surname. It shows she was not an ordinary small folk, but I don't think she was a highborn either. She comes from a knighted family. Just because you are knighted doesn't mean your lineage is going to become nobility, either. Thanks to that, they get a surname but knighthood is not hereditary. We were just an ordinary family without any power or means. The only thing they left me was the death payment of my father, which is 100 gold dragons, and my mother's keepsake, a medallion. The medallion belonged to my mother, but she put it on me on her deathbed. As for the money, usually, only one year's worth of wages are given as death payment, 
but Lord Stark gave my mother four times because he owes his life to my father. It feels bizarre calling someone father when he is five years younger than me. Let's stop the sightseeing and find some animals. Chapter 5 279 AC Even though this is an enormous castle with countless animals inside, it is a daunting task for five years old to catch one of them. Almost everything is feral here. Even the mangy dogs and cats look like dire wolves and lions. It took me nearly five hours to corner a terrier-looking small dog. Come on, good doggy, come here. Big bro will give you this bread, come here. When the dog saw it was cornered, it started to growl and bare its teeth. Because it looked like it would attack if I got close. I tore a piece of bread and threw it in front of the dog. It stopped growling and started to smell the piece of bread. After deciding it was food, the dog began to relax a bit. It started to look at me and the bread on the ground. After seeing I wasn't trying to get close. It ate the bread on the ground. The dog started to look around for another piece after seeing I had one in my hand. All of its focus was collected on the bread in my hand. When I moved the bread, it kept following it with its head. It was hilarious to see. I extended my hand it started to get close while sniffing. It ate the bread in my hand, and I started petting him. Good boy let's see if I can make a connection. I focused my mind and only thought of establishing a connection. Mana inside me started to move, but it felt like I was trying to reach the other side of a giant chasm. I kept pushing with my mana, but I was starting to feel drained. My mana was not enough. But I realized something after one attempt. I had my conjectures about how to make a connection and what caused the failure. Is this the effect of 5x skill? I felt like the animal was too big. I set my eyes on the sky and shouted, does every skill you gave me have to be useless at the start? Do I have to tame a squirrel or a mouse as my first animal? Vav Vav. When the dog started to bark, I stopped contemplating. What? Do you expect me to give you more food? Sorry, I don't have any more food. It really looked like it understood me. It stopped barking and looked around, then started running into the alley. I need to start with the smallest animal I can find. The good thing is at least the 5x is working just fine. I think I'll love this 5x skill more than any other. I should go back to the keep. When I got back, someone jumped on me from the corner. Got you. We fell to the ground, and he started to mount on top of me, then said, will you yield? I was shocked for a second. When I calmed down, I realized it was Rob Stark that tackled me. That is cheating, Rob. No, it is not. A knight needs to be prepared for everything. He got up and reached his hand to me. I took his hand and swept his leg, and he fell right next to me, and we started to wrestle on the ground. Our strength was close to each other, so we could not pin each other to the ground. After several minutes we lay on our back, breathing heavily on the ground. Rob turned to me and said, you made the right choice by giving up. You gave up first. He got up and said, no, I did not. You did. No, you did. We did this a few more times and decided it was a draw. It is really tiring to act like an average five-year-old. POV Catalan Stark My lord husband and I were standing on the balcony and looking at the front yard. Then I saw them, and my boy was playing with that common boy again. I turned to my lord husband and asked, My lord, does he need to play with that common boy? I don't think it is proper for a highborn to be friends with small folk. It is proper in the north that common boy's father saved my life. The only reason you have a husband and your children get to know their father is because his father died instead of me. In the north, the life of highborn and small folk is a bit more blurred. Winter is coming, and we shouldn't waste our time with such things. If he has half of his father's talent in the sword, he will make a good soldier for our son, and if he shows the same grit as his father, he might even be knighted. I looked at them from the balcony and said, if it is what you want, it shall be. I know I'm being a bit harsh to the boy, I'm not heartless. I pity the boy because he became an orphan at such a young age. Most likely, he won't even remember his parents when he grows up. POV MC Rob and I played for a few hours, and after that, I retreated to a quiet place in the backyard because I realized something. I have wrestled with him for at least two hours, but I didn't feel like I gained 5x wrestling experience. Is it because I wasn't focused on wrestling and just having fun? To test my hypothesis, I got up and took a long branch. I held the thing like a sword and started hacking it and swinging with it for two hours. Nothing happened, as I thought so. 
This time, I held the branch straight and started to do a vertical slash while focusing on the training. I kept swinging for a few hours. Then it came. That feeling of comprehension. Yes, it was minuscule because of the little time I trained, but it was there. It was minimal, but it was there. I was learning. So, it only activates if I focus or contemplate something. If I do something mindlessly, it will not work. Hmm, like the other skills, the intent is important. If there is no focus, it will not work. Chapter 6 279 AC For a week, I would wake up as early as possible. It is tough to wake up early when there is no alarm clock. There is a clock tower, but it does not have a watch, it has a bell. It is only used to inform the commoners with bell rings. The time is kept by sundials in the morning and with marked candles at night. It would have been really cool if I were an engineer and knew how to make a clock. I know it is powered by springs and gears, but I don't know the dimensions and how to configure them. Anyway, I start working on my mana for six hours until the afternoon. I would spend all of it doing different things with it. Like I would try using other elements. I'm able to use water, fire, and wind. All of them are magnificent. When I use water magic, I can make a bead of water, and the wind is the most powerful. I can create a gust of wind. I can make stronger gust than the spell by blowing with my mouth. It is unfortunate how weak my magic is even after all that magic training. I would have lunch and then usually play with Rob. We usually play tag or wrestle. It is a bit annoying, but it is good for my future. Being the childhood friend of the future lord is a good thing. Afterward, I would rest or meditate like the Rob said and replenish my mana. By the time of dinner, I would have full mana. Then I would use all of it again, trying to make a familiar bond with a bird I bought. I still don't have enough mana for a bound, but I can feel the advancement. It is minor, but it is there. When I thought about what spell to cast, I heard someone shouting and bang the door Ermer, are you there? I opened the door and saw a stable hand boy standing there. I don't remember his name. The Lord is looking for you. I got up in a hurry and ran to the yard. When I was outside, I saw Lord Stark, Rob, and his other son, John. I don't like calling him a bastard son or a baseborn son. My Lord, I'm here, I said. Ah, little Ermer, come with me. All of you, wait here. I followed him, and we went to one of the tables near the training ground. He sits down and tells me to sit too. So, you know I owe your father my life, right? Yes, my lord, I heard it from other people, that is why I don't have to work, and I can play with Aro. Little lord. You are a smart child, you know you shouldn't call him Rob when there are other people around. Do you know why I called you here? No, my lord, I do not. Since you know you shouldn't call Rob by his name when people are around. Can I take it as you know what a highborn and commoner is? Yes, my lord, you are highborn, and I'm a commoner. Yes, as a commoner, you need to work, but thanks to your father, I'm allowing you to grow with more means. I wonder if I'm doing good or bad with this, and I want you to have a profession as you grow up. Do you have anything you would like to be or anything you like doing? This is an excellent opportunity. I could try his limit since he saw me as a child and wouldn't find it offensive if I asked something I shouldn't. As I understand, it is tough for a commoner to become a knight. My father was a noble's bastard. Still, it took him many years to become a squire. He first became a soldier in Winterfell, then he was made a squire when he was 22 years old to reward his bravery and valor in a battle. Before he died, he had just become a knight. I started acting shy and said. Can I become a knight? He was a bit surprised by my question. He started looking into my eyes for a while. Why do you want to be a knight? I want to be like my father. Becoming a knight as a commoner is a hard thing. Even if you become one, the noble knights will look down on you. Do you know what that means? I nodded and said, they wouldn't like me. Yes, something like that. You might not be able to become one, and do you have what it takes? I got up from my chair, held my head high and banged my chest, saying, I can do it. Ha ha ha, good, good, a man should have some gut. Okay, I will let you train in the sword, and everything else is up to you. Roderick. Yes, my lord. From now on, you will train Rob, John, and Ermer in sword and war. Yes, my lord. I bowed and said, thank you, my lord, 
I will not disappoint you. Hope not he got up and left. I turned around and bowed down to Roderick Castle and said. Thank you for your guidance, Master Castle. He is a man around forty years old and has a little bit of belly, but he is a tall and muscular man, and he is the master at arms of Winterfell. Haha, <laughs> we shall see if you will thank or beg. All three of you going to be here every afternoon, and we will be starting in the morrow. Then he went after Lord Stark. So we are going to start learning the sword. Said Rob and started swinging a branch he found on the ground. I looked at John, he was happy but wasn't trying to show it. He was a bit of an introvert. He doesn't talk much, and he usually doesn't want to play with Rob because whenever Lady Catalan sees us playing, she would always call John and give him an arduous chore. With time, little John started to get that he only gets chores when he plays with us and starts to distance himself a bit. Occasionally he still plays with us, but he would stop and run the second he sees Lady Catalan. Chapter 7 280 AC After leaving Rob and John, I returned to my room and resumed my mana training. With every passing day, I'm becoming more sensitive to mana. I can feel my mana is growing, but I don't know how much. It is tough to decide if I have enough mana to cast one last time, so I always leave some mana. If there isn't enough, I might pass out or worse. There is no reason to risk it. Trying to guess how much mana I have left is like guessing how much water is in a cup, and I can only eyeball it. But there must be a better way. It would have been so much easier if it were like in a PC game and if I had a mana number and the spell had cost as a number. Anyway, let's focus. Just when I was starting to cast a spell, it hit me. I'm such an idiot. The answer is authentication. The Rob said it could identify anything as long as I have the knowledge and I have the knowledge. It is just a simple math problem. Suppose I gave my cheapest spell the number one. And keep casting it until I deplete my mana. I can have a numerical value for every spell I can cast after it. It took 21 authenticate to drain my mana. So, it means I have 21 mana in value. The following three months have been fascinating and boring at the same time. It was exciting because of the magic training and my basic magic spells getting stronger daily. After three months of hard work, I now have 24 mana and my elemental ball spells have a diameter of 6 centimeters, I think it is 2.2 inches. It was equally boring as the sword training. Most of the time, I would space out while swinging it, and 5x will stop working, and I would get a slap at the back of the head if Roderick realized I was spacing out, but I'm starting to get the forms down. The hardest part is what Roderick calls the foreplay, a two-hour physical training session of running, jumping, and all kinds of drills. After that, he says, let's get to the real deal. It is a really sick joke to make in front of six years olds, but Rob and John don't get it. POV Roderick A. The young lord is really working hard. He is the most talented among the lord's sons. John is working hard, too, but he is not as gifted as him. It has been three months since the lord ordered me to see them trained, but the one I'm most astonished about is Ermer. I knew his father, he was like a beast when fighting, but I didn't mean he was so powerful. In the literal sense, he fought like how a dog or a wolf rips its prey apart. He fought with a feral rage. That was the way he fought, it was always a relentless attack. The boy is just like his father in that aspect, but he has something his father never had, a calm and thinking mind. Oh, and of course, a monstrous talent I have never seen. It is like he started learning the sword two years ago. He didn't know anything about the sword three months ago, but now he has an acceptable form and movement. I didn't even see my lord coming until he made himself known. I must have been deep in thought. How are the boys doing, Roderick? I hurriedly turned around and saluted him when I heard the voice. They are doing fine, my lord, the little lord is really talented like his father. When he hears that, the lord starts smiling. And turns toward John, but he does not ask how he is doing, he just watches. So, I tell him. It is still early to say yet. John is talented in the sword, too, but not as talented as the little lord. How is Ermer? My lord, if you hadn't come here, I would have come to you about him. Why? Does he not have any talent for it? No, my lord, he has too much of it. What do you mean? My lord, if he works like this, in ten years, the north will have an Arthur Dane of its own. I started smiling. Is he that talented? Yes, my lord. He just started training three moons ago, and he is not that motivated too, but he fights like a passable fighter. 
The Lord gets up, takes a wooden sword from the rack, and goes next to Ermer. POVMC. I really hate self training times, and it's just building muscle memory. In moments like this, I'm really thankful for 5x. I can't even think about doing this five times more to reach this level. I heard steps coming closer and thought Roderick was coming to slap my head. I turn around as fast as I can and swing the sword. I'm focusing. Bang. Two swords clash, and I see Lord Stark standing there. Right away, I bowed and apologized. I'm sorry, my lord, I thought you were Sir Roderick coming to punish me. Rather than an apology, I want to see if you kept your promise to me. Raise your sword and strike. He is serious about it. I started to get in form and ready myself for a fight. I charge at him, and we lock our sword for a second like in the movies, but we don't wait there, right away I use my short stature and try to slip past his sword by angling my sword toward my right shoulder while trying to cut his right arm, but he expertly prevents that by guiding my sword away. I can't win in reach and strength against a grown-up, and I don't think I am faster than him. There is only one other way to victory. Chapter 8 280 AC Whenever I try to get close, he slashes left and right. If he can't slash, he pushes me away. He is toying with me, it is really annoying. Being weak is really a sin. I need to get stronger, it is like a giant standing before me. That is the difference between a grown-up and a six-year-old. I stand no chance in a real fight, but he is playing and underestimating me. Again, I try going in for an attack, and he pushes me with his sword. This time I jumped back and rolled back on the ground like I lost my balance because of the push and fell. When I roll up, I throw the sword in my hand. Right at that moment, he gets a bit surprised when he parries it, I get past his defense and stab him with the wooden dagger I made in the leg, and when I was going for his gut, I felt his sword at my neck. He got back his form really fast. All I was able to get from the surprise attack was a cut on his leg against me, losing my head. He puts his sword on the rack, looks at me, and says, that was not a disappointment, good work. Turns to Roderick and motions him to follow him. POV Ned Stark. The last move he pulled was really shocking. It wasn't a masterful move or anything, but as a child, he thought of that and pulled it off. He realized I was playing with him right away, and he stood no chance when it came to strength, stamina, or speed. Normally a child would get angry at that moment and charge with rage, but he was calm throughout the fight. He is calm and cunning when it comes to fighting. Nothing like his dad. He really is a monster. We need to teach him about honor too. He is too calculated for a child. Without the right guidance, he might walk a dark path. Roderick, from this day onward, make sure he works hard and give him better food with meat inside at every meal. If we are going to have a master swordsman, we should feed and teach him to the best of his abilities. And at least two times a day, make him spar with older boys, and you will realize when the time comes to pit him against the youngest of the squires. If you have the best steel, you need to beat it under a hammer and temper it with the strongest fires. Yes, my lord, right away. If we raise this child right, he might become the sword of the north. POVMC. It was a hard fight, but it felt like I almost touched something. The feeling I got from this fight was marvelous. I can feel the 5x is working right now, and it is like I had five fights with lord back to back. If we fought again, I could do a tiny bit better. Ermer, come here. I start running towards Sir Roderick. From now on, you will not train with Rob and John, and I will train you at other times. You can go and rest for today. From morrow, we are starting right after breaking your fast. We will do your training in two sessions, four hours in the morning and four hours after lunch. That means I need to get up earlier so I can train my magic. Yay, who needs sleep? Brat, why aren't you answering? He slaps the back of my head. Yes, Sir Roderick. I got back to my room and started training my magic. The basic elemental magic I have was getting better and better with every passing month. I found out I could use six elements. If I have to rank them from weakest to strongest, it would be like this, Jelmio, Wind, Dash Idar, Water, Dash Jelms, Lightning, Perseus, Fire, Sylvian, Ice, Dash Tegan, Earth, Ball Spells. Wind Ball is basically a light push, it is too weak to do anything. Water Ball is a 6 cm diameter of water, but it can distract or make an enemy flinch at least. Lightning is actually really dangerous, but it is impossible to aim it. 
After half a meter, 20 inches, it just darts off at random. Fireball is becoming useful, it still can't kill, but it can cause fear, flinch and blind the enemy if hits in the head. Ice Ball is strong because of the blunt force behind it, but it is so much more brittle than Earth Ball. Earth Ball is the strongest right now and the deadliest spell I have. Think about getting hit anywhere in the body with a 6 cm rock that is traveling really fast. I'm trying to make it deadlier by adding some rotation and a spike shape to it. Right now, I can make its shape oval but can't make it pointy or add a rotation to it. If I can make its shape like a spike or, at the very least, in the shape of a bullet and add a fast rotation to it, it will become one of the most powerful single target spells. As for my other druid aspects like herbology, rituals, and familiars, I can't do any of that yet. I'm counted as a beginner or mediocre herbalist because I worked for one in college for four years to make ends meet. I know hundreds of herbs and what they do, but I don't know if the herbs I know exist in this world or what they are called. For the ritual magic, I have two hypotheses, one, I need to create them myself as I continue to learn this magical language, or like the language, it will come to me when I'm strong enough. For the familiar bond, I know I only need more mana. I can feel that I'm getting close to bonding with blue. I named the little bird I bought. Yes, I know the name has no creativity. So what, I like it. Chapter 9 280 AC After a few hours of magic training, I tried to understand the infinite training skill, but I couldn't seem to make it work. I think it will start working after I get a familiar, but the Rob said that my familiars and I could train in it. I really can't understand this skill, and I thought of two more applications for the authentication skill. Assigning a numerical value for my strength and speed, all I have to do is give my speed and strength the value of 1 and find someone faster or slower than me, and authenticate their stats. If I witness their speed or experience their strength, authentication can calculate their value automatically. Of course, it isn't 100% reliable. Because what I'm seeing or feeling is the speed and strength my opponent allows me to see. For example, if an enemy had 5 times my strength, but it only used 2 times the strength, I would only know it has 2 in strength, I would have no idea it has 5 times strength until they used it and all of this made me realize something about authentication skill, it is so much more powerful than I first realized. I learned all of these math and physics calculations and how it is done in high school and college, but I remember them vaguely. I have the knowledge, but I don't remember half of it. This means if I have learned and comprehended it at the time. I don't need to retain the knowledge for the skill to work. When I entered the kitchen, I saw the staff working on the supper. They were readying a venison. It was forbidden to hunt in the Lord's forest without his permit. People tended to stay clear of poaching. So they wouldn't lose a hand from it. I climbed on my stool and sat down. Now I'm able to sit on it by myself. Breeze saw me and brought my food. How are you, sweetheart? I really don't understand why you want to be a knight so badly. Can't you choose a less dangerous job? I want to be powerful so that I can protect everyone. When I said this, she started smiling and gave the food to me and said. The Lord must have been very pleased with you for you to be getting meat for every meal from now on. It was a plate of a venison stew with carrots and yam-like veggies. It was good and the best food I have ever eaten here. I devoured it immediately, but I would love to have some potatoes. Yes, there weren't any potatoes or rice here. It was a nightmarish training for a month, but I was starting to get used to it. The two hours of strength training. After that, two hours of sword swinging, a break for two hours. At this time, I need to rest and eat lunch, then comes the fun part, the sparring. In the afternoon training, I would train with older kids. They were usually two to three years older. I won some and lost some, but I was getting better. Now I have managed to beat one of the guys I lost before. I don't think I can keep working like this. It is not because it is hard, but it is not that useful to me. I need time to train in magic, and I want to learn blacksmithing. I always watched blacksmithing programs on the TV and wanted to do it but never had time for it, and I wanted to learn archery too. Roderick was teaching me archery but only once in a while. I need more free time as I grow up. So, after the training this afternoon, I went to him. Sir Roderick, can I ask you something? Ask away, lad. Sir, can I train less, please? Why? Is it too hard? No but I want to do other things, study, and learn many things, so I need time for those things. What do you want to learn then? MMMM, archery, blacksmithing, 
hunting, reading, writing, and many other things. Haha, <laughs> you want many things, but isn't it better to get good at one thing rather than knowing everything a little? For normal people, it is. But you know I'm not normal. After seeing all the other children older than me, I know I'm different. You have a point, but Lord ordered me to train you hard. We need to ask for his permission. But I don't want to train all day. He gets serious and says, Lad, don't forget who you are and who you are talking to, we might give you a little leeway but don't be arrogant. The day after, I saw the Lord going for his inspection of the grounds, I ran to him and bowed. Eh, little Ermer, how are you, my boy? How is the training going? It is good, my lord, and I am working really hard for the sword, and Sir Roderick can attest to it. And Sir Roderick nods his head approvingly. My lord, I would like to have more freedom with my time if you could please grant it to me. When he hears this, he looks disappointed and gets a bit sad. Did you not beg for a chance to be a knight? Are you going to be a knight while lazing around? No, my lord, I'm not asking for time to laze around. I'm asking for time to study and train on other things. What other things? Things like archery, blacksmithing, hunting, reading, writing, my lord. He looks surprised and looks into my eyes without blinking, then says. I will allow it but on one condition. You will not neglect your sword training, and Roderick will follow your development closely. If you falter with the sword, I will forbid all of it. Yes, thank you, my lord. I got the answer I wanted and ran away after bowing and thanking him again. Roderick turns to the lord and asks, Are we not spoiling the child by doing what he wants, my lord? He might be a child, but most of the time, he doesn't act like one, and more importantly, he can look into my eyes without cowering. Roderick asks confusedly, My lord. Do you know my sons can't look into my eyes without cowering, but he can look straight into my eyes. He doesn't have any fear of adults. Did you ever hear him whine or complain about childish things? Now that you said it, no, my lord, he never does those things. Exactly, if we smother him, he wouldn't mind running away to do what he wants. He is that fearless. You can't hold a bird too hard, or you will smother it. You need to hold it just tight enough, it will feel comfortable and safe, so when you open your hand, when the time comes, it will not fly away. Chapter 10 A slash N I'm going to change the Maester of Winterfell by the year 280 AC. Whaley's flowers have been the master, but I'm making Lewin the Maester because he is the one who delivered all of the Stark children. 280 AC. I have got what I wanted, a bit of freedom to do what I want with my time. First, I need to learn how to read and write common tongue, and the alphabet and the language used are entirely different from English. So, I go to the Maester of Winterfell, Maester Lewin. I have to go to the Maester's turret and ask Maester Lewin if he can teach me, but I don't know why I always get a bad feeling about it. Let's try it. If he doesn't teach me, I will try something else. I get out of my room and go to his place, which is the Maester's turret. It is right between the kitchen, bell tower and the hunter's gate on the east side of the Winterfell. I started to climb the stairs slowly and reached the turret. When I knock at the door, an old voice tells me to come in. There is an old man in his sixties inside. He is thin and looks a bit sickly and tired. But his eyes looked like they didn't lose their glow. His body might look depreciated, but his mind must be still sharp as ever. What do you want, boy? Maester Lewin, is it possible for you to teach me reading and writing? It is not my boy, I already have so many responsibilities and don't even have time to scratch my head. Then can you write me the alphabet and show me how to vocalize the letters a few times, and if possible, Give me a book you use to teach reading please? Please Maester, can you spare a few minutes for this? Okay, but only for an hour, and after that, you will not bother me with these kinds of things. For an hour, he showed me how to read the letters and how to read a sentence. The one hour we worked felt like I worked for five hours. I still didn't know how to read and write, but I learned the vocalization of the letters. I plan to learn how to read in a few weeks of work. I already knew how to speak the language and now I have learned the vocalization of the letters. I can see in its core, it is not that different from English. I made a training schedule with Roderick. I have to decide how I'm going to spend my days. I only need to train in sword for three hours, one hour of physical training and two hours of sparring. I have eight hours of free time on my hand, and until I learn reading and writing, I'm going to spend a minimum of two hours a day working on that, 
so I'm left with around five hours if I count the rest I need. What should I start doing with this free time? I need at least eight to ten hours of sleep because I'm still growing. Should I start learning blacksmithing? No, I'm still too small and weak to work on metals. So, archery and magic training it is. Oh, I almost forgot that I should spend some time with Rob and be his friend, it will come in handy later. So, I decided to spend one to two hours playing with him. I might not be his best friend, but I will try to be a close friend. I have to go to the archery range to practice. The range is right next to the broken tower. They say it used to be the castle's highest structure, but it was destroyed by lightning a long time ago. I get a training bow and arrows when I reach there. The arrows and the bow don't look like good quality weapons, they are a bit old and really weathered. But it will do its job. Roderick had taught me the basic of archery, but he doesn't think of archery as a real martial weapon. It is a war or hunting weapon used by common soldiers. He says a knight should know how to use it, but they shouldn't waste time trying to master it. What I think is the opposite of him. A good longbow or a composite bow would be a deadly thing in the hand of a knight or anyone trained. I prefer a composite bow, but they don't exist here. They have regular short bows and long bows. Short bows are army's primary ranged weapon because they are easy and dirt cheap to make. They have a range of close to 45 to 140 meters, 50 to 150 yards. The longbow and composite bow have a close range to each other. The composite bow has a little bit longer range. The main difference is that you can't use a longbow while riding and can't move while shooting but it is much easier to make a longbow than a composite bow, that is the upside. Longbows are made of long wood, but composite bows are made of sinew, horns, and glue. A composite bow can shoot for 180 to 190 meters, around 200 yards, in a straight line and 370 meters, 400 yards, in an arced shot. A longbow is usually about 2 meters, 6 feet, in length, the composite bow is around 90 centimeters, 3 feet. Just because you watched someone make it doesn't mean you can make it too. I would need a lot of time to master bow making to be able to create composite bows. I start training in the range for 2 hours a day, and the rest of the time, I will go back to my room and train my magic there. This went on for 2 months. I learned how to read in a month. I really love 5x skill, and after that, I have used the time for reading and writing practices, mostly reading time after learning it. I have been spending 2 hours in the library of Winterfell. When I first asked Lord Stark permission to enter the library, he didn't believe me when I said I learned reading, and he put me through a test. When I read the book he gave me, he believed me and gave the permission. The library has many things to learn from history, herbs, medicine, and existing technology. Oh, and dragons, giants, forest spirits, and all kinds of magic are real. I started learning about the religions of this world. I didn't know there was Big Red Tree with a face in Winterfell. I want to see it now that I know it exists. Comment. 27 Comment. Vote. Chapter 11, Chapter 11. Chapter 11. 280 AC. Since I learned about the God's Wood, I have wanted to go there, and it is on the other side of the castle. Winterfell is wall to wall, it is around 10 hectares of land. It is a giant castle, and from the books and people, I learned there are more enormous castles on the continent. I have found the wood without a problem, and it is inside the castle walls. The castle has a small forest inside of it, and the forest has its own walls too. When I entered the woods, I could feel the magic inside of it. It was feeble, but it was there. I will have a better yield if I train here than in my room. So, whenever I have time, I would come back to the woods and I would sit somewhere close to the weirwood tree and start manipulating the elements but not intensely, I would only train the wind and earth elements there and I would try to manipulate from a distance so even if I get caught doing magic people would think it is the work of the old gods. I can't create an earth ball from this distance, but I can cause a tiny shake on the ground. The farthest I can use this is 10 meters. It has yet to be a helpful spell, but the earth ball had started from a pebble. Now I can make a 10 centimeters, 4 inches, ball. When I was back in my room, I would take blue to my hand and try to make connections. I'm feeling it, and it is so close. I have 28 manas, 1.2 speed, and 1.1 strength right now. I asked an ordinary servant to pull me with a rope while I tried not to get pulled, and he had 5 str. I tried this with 10 other men, and it was around 4 to 6. Let's say 5 is the average street, I tried this with Roderick, and he pulled me so hard I basically flew. He has 9 str. 
Of course, none of them were trying to kill me, so I don't think these were their bests. When I was in God's wood, I got caught a few times by the small folk that came to pray. When they felt the strong wind and the moving earth, they almost peed in their pants and ran away. After getting caught today, too, I got up and decided to leave the woods for today. I was almost out of the woods, but I saw a snake and two ravens fighting to protect their nests. It looked like one of the poisonous snakes I had seen in the library's bestiaries. The snake was coiling around a branch right next to the nest and was waiting there without moving. The ravens were flapping their wings and trying to frighten the snake, but it was not working. Each side was blooded, but if the snake is a yellow tail. The ravens were already dead, they just hadn't realized it yet. That may be why it was waiting at a close distance. Just as I was thinking, the ravens started to slow down and started to act sluggish. The poison must be starting to work. One of the ravens started a despaired attack, and the other one joined in right after it. But one of them got bitten by the snake again, and this time it didn't let go right away. The snake violently started to coil around the raven. Because of the commotion, the nest got knocked down from the tree. I ran to it right away and caught it in the air before it dropped down to the ground, and inside of it were two chicks. They had a bit of feather on their torso and wings, but it was grey, not raven colors. When I looked up again, the snake had killed one of the ravens, but the other one gouged the eyes of the snake, so both sides were going to die. I turned to the nest in my hand and started to walk. What am I going to do with you guys? If I leave you here, you will die from hunger or become food to something else. Both of your parents are dead. I have no idea how to take care of you, I've never taken care of birds. If I feed you worms or insects, can you eat them? I have no idea. Hmm, right. Maester Lewin has ravens, he might know if you can be saved. I will try to save you if he says you can live. I started to walk towards the Maester's turret. When I was nearing it, Maester Lewin was coming out, and he was going the other way. I shouted so he would see me. Maester Lewin, could you please wait for me? I approached him respectfully. Maester, I found these raven chicks, and their parents died. Can we tame them? He looks at me and says, why do you want to save them? I pity them, and if I have the power to save them. I should do the right thing, shouldn't I? Before anything else, the one thing you should first know is that the raven chicks need warmth, they have almost no feathers, and the few feathers they have wouldn't protect them against the cold. You must warm them with heated stones until they are fully feathered. As for food, you can't give them hard food, they need soft and moistened foods. Things like pasted worms and caterpillars or eggs. You need to feed them every time they are begging, and it should be from sunrise to sundown every hour. While feeding, be careful not to choke them. It would take five to seven weeks for them to grow strong enough to fly and hunt for themselves, and they become adults in three years. Do you have any other questions? No. I have none. Thank you for the knowledge Maester. Chapter 12 After talking to Maester Lewin, I looked around the streets and alleys for roadside stones with smooth surfaces. I returned to my room. I set the chicks on top of the table and put the ragged cloths I picked up from the kitchen around the nest. I picked up a few stones and used fire magic on them. After they started to feel really hot, I put them under and around the nest to keep them warm until I found a better solution. I dug up some worms. When I went out, then I found two big slabs of stone, one was half the size of the other, and I put them aside. Then I went around the places with damp soil and dug up a bucket of worms. It took me around an hour to pick up all of this. When I returned to my room, I found it in utter chaos. Those two were crying with all their might. I took a half handful of worms and crushed them in a mortar I bought. After that, I used a small piece of wood, flattened with a width of 1 cm, 0.3 inches which I used as a spoon and fed the chicks until they stopped begging. When the room became silent again, I took the slabs of stones I brought to the table. I used some earth magic on them and managed to change their shape a bit into the form of a wide bowl and put the nest inside so it wouldn't move or get destroyed while the chicks moved inside. After that, I started heating the larger slab to a scalding temperature. Then put the other smaller bowl-shaped slab to keep it warm. It wasn't direct heat, so that it would be comfortable for the chicks. Now all I had to do was heat, feed, and clean the shit for one or two months. It is going to be fun, right? I know it is too much work for two stupid birds. But their parents died right before me, and they became orphans. I just want to do it and feel like I have to do it. They are all alone in this world without anyone to lean on when they are tired or scared. 
I just feel like I have to. I don't know, maybe I'm being ridiculous. It has been four weeks since I started looking after them. They are now fully feathered, so I don't need to warm them that much, but I still put some heat onto the slab. Oh, and I named them. One of them has a few white feathers starting right on top of its head and ending close to its beak in the shape of a V. Its feathers are deep and dark navy blue. It is smaller than its sibling, so I think of it as the little sister. It is a she, I can't tell for the life of me, but the maester said it was a female, and the bigger one is a male. So big brother and little sister it is. He is called Erebus. The little sister is called Poe. Erebus looks a bit different in color, it is black as the night itself. They have one thing in common, Erebus also has a few white feathers. But his white feathers are at his wing joints where his wings are folded. Erebus is a little bit of an a-hole. He is always trying to bite me or anything that comes close to him. Poe is more docile, she doesn't attack unless you poke her. I decided to use them in my familiar bound training too. I'm sure I will have enough mana to make a connection in one or two months max, and the ravens would also be able to fly before or at that time. It has been a real challenge to rear them. I had to run all around the place for a whole month because I had to feed them every hour until the sun was down. Because of all that endless running, my speed became 1.4. I think I can take it one more month, but if you don't learn how to fly by, then I'm most likely going to cook and eat you, Erebus, but I will keep Po. She is a good girl, and she doesn't bite daddy. Right good girl. I started petting Po with my finger. Snap, ah. Bad girl. I was in the god's wood, it has been two weeks, and the ravens have started to learn to fly but can only fly for a few seconds and fall on their feathery bums. It had been a nightmare for two weeks. I'm almost spent from all the training and running around. If they don't learn how to fly soon, I must take a break from training and rest a bit. While meditating, I felt my mana go up from 29.8 to 30 and opened my eyes, and it had been almost an hour. I had to go back. I got up and started going back. While walking, I looked around the woods and identified the herbs and weeds I saw. I have been spending more time in the library so my body can rest a bit. In the library, I found a compendium about northern herbs. From that, I learned almost all of the herbs on earth have the same name here. Of course, many don't exist there too. There are always new things to be learned. It was a tiring day. The day was starting to end. The sun rays were beginning to turn orange from the bright yellow, and they were getting caught by Winterfell's 30 meters, 100 feet, tall walls, causing giant shadows to be created by the walls. I got into my room and collapsed on my bed from exhaustion. Something felt so weird. There wasn't any cry for food the second I got inside. I got up and looked at the top of my table, and the nest was empty. I looked around the room, they were not there. I went on to the window to see if the blinds were locked and they were. I heard a caw then I turned around. This couldn't be real. You little murderous a-holes. These two pricks, I have no idea how they got in, but they opened the bird cage and ate blue. This was the reason they were not asking for food because both of them were full. Comment. 10 Comment. Vote. Chapter 13, Chapter 13. Chapter 13. 280 AC. I heard that the ravens could solve easy problems and puzzles, but I didn't think they could open a latch lock. It looks like I was sorely mistaken about it. I took them out of the cage and secured the murder scene. Erebus was raising his wings and cawing at me. Is this little prick challenging me? I looked inside the cage, and it was horrible. Blue and white feathers were everywhere, and almost nothing was left of it. Poor Blue, you will be missed a bit. Let's be honest, I never treated it like a pet. It was just a tool to be used for my magical training, but when I was done with it, I wouldn't kill it, and I would have gifted it to someone else. I cleaned up the mess and threw away the cage because I wouldn't need it anymore. I took Poe to my hand and started to familiar bound spell. It was like, as always, a slow process. The process feels like building a bridge by adding tiny little bricks to each other. If the other side doesn't reach out to you, you'll have to spend more mana. For Poe. She was reaching a bit but not that much. It is still a wild bird, even though I have been feeding it for the past six to seven weeks. At least it is not resisting to the bond. I'm almost spent, I have only one or two mana left. It feels like I can touch it with my fingertips but still not there. I focused one more time and pushed with the rest of my mana. It will work, I know it. The second I spent my last mana, everything went white, 
and I saw a big visage as big as mine, but my eyes were unable to focus yet. I closed my eyes again and took a big breath, trying to calm down and focus. When I opened them again, I saw a giant raven. It was Poe, as big as me. The visage was her. Wait a minute. Is she as big as me, or am I as small as her now? Eh, my brain hurts. Whatever it is, it feels weird. I look at her, and she looks at me, when I turn my head sideways, it does the same, I raise my arms, and she raises her wings. I can feel her. She is curious about me, this room, and the lights coming around the blinds. She is curious about everything. I can feel the bottomless desire to fly and be free before everything goes black. When I woke up, I saw the lights trickling down from the small cracks between the blinds. I got up, opened the blinds, and looked out the window. The sun is on the east side of the castle. When I got to my room, the sun was setting. I tried to establish a bond and succeeded, yes, I can feel it now, I can feel Poe. It means I was out for twelve hours, at the very least. It must be because I have exhausted my mana. Now that I have a familiar, what can I do with it? I'm really curious. It is unfair to Erebus, but I can't take him outside yet. I just will it, and Poe looks at me and coughs. After a few seconds, she starts to fly clumsily and perches on my shoulder. I went out while Erebus was cawing at us. I go towards the god's wood. I think it is the perfect place to train in the castle if you want to be alone. Yes, most people go there to pray to the old gods, but they only go to the weirwood tree, and I always go to the ends of the forest close to the walls. With elemental magic, when I contemplate it, the spells come to me instinctively. I still don't know which language I'm using to cast. I set Poe on a rock and focus on the connection we have. The tether is like a two-way street. I can feel her, and she can feel me. I can order her, but it feels like she is free to do it or not. She can refuse an order or resist it if she doesn't want to do it. It is about our will, too, because I have a stronger will. She can't refuse my orders that much. If I hold the tether connecting us, I can make her do what I want, but it will hurt the tether, it might even break it. The tether will get stronger if I treat her well. It will get weaker if I force her to do things she doesn't want to. Now I'm starting to understand the bond. I'm starting to get magical applications of it, too. I can use my magic to sense where my familiar is. It will be a good scouting spell if I can strengthen it to last for kilometers. The bond provides me with a buff, and now I can use the bond. I have better eyesight. It feels like I can see two times the distance. This time I'm trying something else. I sent my consciousness through the tether and opened my eyes, thinking, Oh, God, this is weird. This was the first time I had seen my face in this life. It feels bizarre. I have dark black hair that looks like a bird's nest. That figures. I never comb my hair, I don't even own a comb. I should start looking after myself. My eyes are silver colored, and I have a pale white face. My eyes are open, and I'm blinking, but it is like I'm sleepwalking. Literally, there is nobody at home. I start flapping my wings and try to fly, which feels natural. I can feel Poe's weak wings getting tired. So, I perch on a branch. I can even feel her consciousness, too. She is starting to feel uncomfortable, so I end the connection. It goes black, and I get back to my body. Chapter 14 280 AC I started to wonder if it was possible to connect with Poe without being a zombie if I could share only her sight while still having mine. It would be so good, but I can't do it yet. When I get back home, I'm going to try to bind with Erebus too. While I'm here, I should work on my elements too. Almost all my spells started to be lethal. The elemental balls I can make are now around 20 centimeters, 8 inches, but I can only make the ice and earth ball up to 15 centimeters, 6 inches. It is because they are denser materials. Still, earth ball, or as I prefer to call it, earth bullet, is my most potent spell. When I shoot one at a thick tree, it makes a big dent in its trunk. If I use it with a spin, it can embed the stone into the tree trunk. I can't make its shape like a spike yet, but I can add a little bit more spin now. If I use it with spin, I spend one more mana. It costs six manas. As of now, I have 31 manas. I can use five earth bullets or six other spells. As for my other spells, the wind spell is still the weakest, but it is not useless anymore. I can't kill something with it yet, 
but I can use it to push things back. One night, I was coming from the library, and a stray dog attacked me from the roadside bushes. I got startled, and by reflex, I used a wind ball, which pushed the dog back, and I think it felt like getting kicked because it whined then ran away. For the lightning spell, I decided to use it as a touch spell because one time I shot the spell, it arched down, and it would have hit my foot if I had been walking. So, I will only use it in close combat, which is also powerful. I think it can definitely knock out a teenager, but I don't know if it can knock out a grown big man. Now that I think about it, I don't have to waste time digging worms and running back to my room to feed them anymore. I can start focusing on my physical and sword training again. I had put them at a bare minimum for the last two months, and now I can focus again. I promised Lord Stark I wouldn't neglect sword training. Even though I have lessened my time on it, I'm still training, and because of the 5x skill, I am advancing in it too. I'm not a squire yet, but Roderick said if I keep getting better like this, he might accept me as his squire in a few years. I'm still young, only six years old. But I'm able to beat ten years old squires, and I would be able to beat twelve years old ones too if we only fight with swordsmanship, but when it comes to physical strength and speed, I always fall short. Right now, I have 1.5 STR and 1.6 speed, but twelve years old squires usually have around 2.2 STR and 2 SPD. I know for a fact those are their max stat. Because every time we finished a sparring session, they would be breathing like a horse and looking at me with fear and envy. What would I be doing, you might ask. Ah, oh, I'm on the ground because I got beaten like a dog. I really don't understand how a child beat a grown man in those novels I read when I was on Earth. I would have understood if they were using magic. I can kill six grown men with the mana I have, too, if they come at me one at a time, but I can't beat them without magic. It is just not possible. I can't even beat twelve years olds let alone grown men. It has been a year since I came here. If I take all the time I trained in the sword with my 5x skill, it would be around 3,500 to 4,500 hours, somewhere around there. Let's just say 5 years of experience. Usually, a knight would have approximately 10 to 15 years of experience when they are knighted. Most of them were nobles and started working with swords at the young age of 5 to 6, but I heard in the south, most of them would train only for self-defense. Only low nobles and second-borns, or spares they call them, would train in the sword for war. I was on my way to my room when six children around the age of ten surrounded me. In the middle was Hallis Mullen, one of the household guards of Winterfell. They are not counted as highborn yet, but they are not small folk either. You could say they are minor noble. They are granted a surname and a banner but no land to rule. After a few generations of service, they may be granted a keep if they show promise. Look what we have here. A freak of nature and a commoner who doesn't know his betters. I sighed heavily and said, what would the noble squires want from this little and humble swordsman? Look at his arrogance even when saying noble squires, I really hate your smug face. You can't have it. When I said that, Hallis got confused and asked, what do you mean I can't have it? I tried to sound hurt and having a hard time, then said, you can't have my handsome face, I know you are really jealous, but what can I do? Your mother looked at nothing but pig's bum when she was pregnant with you. You should go and ask her why she did that and it is not my fault you look like a hog. First, he didn't get what I was saying. It is a bit cute when children try to act like grown-ups, but it is actually unfortunate when you think about why they were here. They didn't know what hate was. Their parents and grown-ups taught them that. In reality, it is not their idea to go and beat the commoner child who is better than the nobles, those are not the words of a child. They must be learning all those words from the grown-ups around them. But I'm still going to beat their asses. Just because I'm sad about it doesn't mean I'm going to let them push me around like a rag. I knew this day was coming. The day I start beating noble squires, so I always carry a wooden sword when I'm out of my room. So, I gripped the sword handle and started waiting for them to make the first move. I think Hallis, at last, understood what I called him, so he shouted, Get him, break at least an arm. Comment. 13 Comment. Vote. Chapter 15 Chapter 15 Chapter 15 I ordered Poe to fly to a tree branch and immediately pulled my wooden sword. Four of those six children don't know me, so they will most likely underestimate the six-year-old commoner, but I watched them fight in the training ground. The real problems are Hallis and the other squire, whose name I don't remember, so I'm going to call him Grunt A. 
I fought with them so that they won't underestimate me. Hallis and the other one stayed at the back. They didn't charge at me right away. Both of them would most likely wait for me to be busy with the other four and attack me from the blind spots or surround me. I can't let them surround me, or I will get beaten. I charge at the farther left one, acting as if I'm going to attack from the right side. Sidestep to the left at the last second, causing him to swing his stick and miss, and I use the pommel of my sword to hit his neck, knocking him down. One was down and five to go. Right as that one goes down, the one next to it strikes at my right side, but I was expecting him, so I did a back step and then lunged at his abdomen. When I hit him, he got winded, but I got exposed a bit because of the lunge. This wasn't the right action. This is my first time fighting against multiple opponents. This mistake caused me not to be able to dodge or parry. I have to block, and I wouldn't say I like blocking. Blocking is all about strength. I might have the build of a nine-year-old, but these children are not ordinary children either, they have better strength than I have. They have around 1.7 to 1.9 STR, but they are slow. They have approximately 1.3-1.5 SPD. There were only two of them faster than me, but I had already knocked them out, this was why I attacked them first. I couldn't dodge the next attack and had to block it. It was hard, and I got pushed back and lost my balance. Another one was ready to land a strike at my upper torso, but I decided to roll back because he was not expecting this and swung in the air, losing his balance and tripping over one of his downed friends before falling to the ground. When I rolled back, I picked up a handful of sand without showing them, then started to run away. They were shouting, Coward, come back here. Cowards are you for real, you are coming at me six to one. Who is the craven, you hypocrites? When I looked back and saw that they weren't coming to the alley. They are not entirely brain dead. So, I need to taunt them, then. Everyone knows the Starks family creed is winter is coming, but for your families, it must be honor is nothing if you don't have the number, or I can't fight by myself. Ooh, ooh I found a better one, I'm nothing but an ugly little hog. This one is just perfect, isn't it, Hallis the hog? For a second, his face looked like a hog, but he must have forgotten who his opponent was because he was charging me with reckless abandon. So, thank you for your offerings, Hallis. He tried to use his strength. I'm not surprised that he has the most crooked stats, 1.9 STR and 1.3 SPD. He is slow as hell, so his strength means nothing to me. He used an overhead vertical slash with his stick, and I just guided his strike to the side with a parry. Then I stepped in, holding my wooden sword with one hand, and smacked the hilt to the center of his face, right on his nose. He cried in pain but I wasn't finished because he wasn't down yet. I strike the back of his knee. He screamed again and fell to his knees. Then I need his face right on his nose again. This time he fell. At that moment, I didn't see Grunt A going around to my left while I was busy with Hallis. I couldn't dodge, so I blocked again. He was too strong, same as Hallis 1.9 STR. This block caused my skin to tear in my hand and start to bleed. Thank the old gods. I changed my grip right before the strike, so my offhand got hurt, not the dominant one. I'm not ambidextrous yet. I still favor my left hand. But the strike was strong. It caused me to be pushed back to the alley wall. Bang ugh, crashing sounds. It hurts so bad that it is going to bruise. He was coming at me again. The second I realized I wasn't going to fall but crash onto the wall, I put my hand in my pocket, pulled out the sand, and threw it at his face. Because of the sand, the tear in my hand started to throb. But he got blinded, and I landed a strike on his balls. His eyes went white, and his mouth was shaped like an, oh. It was a bit funny. When he passed out, the last three looked at each other and then ran away. My heart was beating out of my chest. I was exhausted and hurting. I might have a toned body, but I'm still a six-year-old. I bruise and hurt easily. Even though I work like a dog. I still don't have decent stamina. Dot. I was so tired, so I went to a water source, cleaned my hurt hand, then went to my room. I used an iron bucket and started to boil some water. After the water cooled down, I washed the wound thoroughly for a few minutes. Because I knew I was going to get hurt sometime, I collected some garlic and honey from the kitchen to use on wounds, then used a clean cloth to bandage it. Chapter 16 280 AC Bang! 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 Bang. The door started to bang, and someone opened the door really hard. 
the ravens and I jumped up from where we were. It was a winter fell guard. Ermer Drazel, you are coming with us. The Lord is waiting for you. What happened? We don't know, and we do not ask questions when ordered to do a thing. All I know is the Lord ordered us to bring you to his solar. When we arrived there, I understood what was happening. Hallis and his grunts were there with their fathers. Four of them were all bruised and bloodied, especially Hallis. His nose was crooked, red, and blue in color. The one I kicked in the balls couldn't stand, so he was sitting. I got his name from the whispering going on around us. He was from a household guard of Starks, and his name was Will Flant. Lord Stark looked at me and said, You are accused of ambushing and assaulting noble-born children here today. What say you? It is a lie, my lord, they were the ones doing the ambush and the assault. You lying common street rat, do you expect us to believe you beat six ten years old squires by yourself without an ambush and when they were armed? Nothing but mummery. Said the father of Will, Mander Flant. Another one of the fathers shouted, Who do you want us to believe? You or six squires saying you only managed to beat them because of the ambush. If I were ten years old, I would have beaten them black and blue with my eyes closed and one hand tied. The only reason two of them were able to run away is I'm six years old now. After I said that, all hell broke loose, all of them started to shout and tried to reach me. Silence! shouted Lord Stark. His shout created a deadly silence. He took a deep sigh and looked at me for a few minutes. He turned to the other children, got up, started to look into their eyes, then said in a furious tone. Did he ambush you, or did you all ambush him? If you tell the truth now. You will not be punished, but if you lie and the truth comes out, I will punish you all really heavily. My lord, we didn't ambush him. We were walking around the castle, and then he came out of a dark alley and started to attack us with a wooden sword. Said one of the grunts. After that, one of the guards that brought me here showed the lord my bloodied wooden sword. What do you say about the proofs they put out? It is all lies, my lord. I have beaten them, but they cut my way and tried to break my arms. A swordsman's arms, my lord, should I have let them do that? If they are telling the truth. Let them swear upon their ancestors' names and souls. What they are saying is the truth. Look at the galls on this little rat. How dare you demand something from your betters? They were not my betters when they were ambushing me and then crying under my sword. The second I finished talking, I knew I had made a mistake, but it was too late. Slap. A big hand hit me with a backhand slap. I fell to the floor, my ears rang, and my mouth was full of blood. I think my inner cheek got busted. I'm sorry for my actions, my lord, but this commoner can't talk like that to our children or us even though you favor him. Lord shakes his head disapprovingly to my words and says nothing. He paces a bit and then says, he might have gone a bit too far with his words, but he is not being unreasonable about the oath. Right at that moment, Roderick shouts, all of you should be ashamed of yourselves. All grown men but still bullying and demanding ten flogging as punishment for a six years old child. Then another ruckus begins. Silence. I will decide after getting the oaths of all the children. One of Hallis's grunts starts his oath, I swear upon my ancestors and their soul what I said is nothing but a truth he ambushed us. The second he finishes his oath, the blinds of the solar open with a load bang, and a strong wind enters. At the same time, the fire in the fireplace grows to three times its size. Whoa, ah, ah, shocked voices. Everyone is shocked, and some become fearful. Then the second one finishes his oath, and then the same thing happens again. Bang. Fush. Whoa, ah, ah, shocked voices. Now some of them look like they are going to shit themselves. Even Lord Stark seems confused. Just when the third one was going to open his mouth, the same happened again. Whoa, ah, ah, shocked and fearful voices. He squats down and puts his head between his arms, head down. He starts shouting in a frightened voice. No, 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 we lied, we lied, please forgive us, ancestors. We ambushed him, and we had sticks too. Please forgive me. He started crying and begging to be forgiven. That cost all of my mana, but it was worth it. I love magic. When he confessed without stopping, all of their faces turned sour upon this and they began to whisper to each other. Roderick says while shouting and fuming with anger, now we know how noble your proud sons are. From now on, I'm forbidding them from training with my group, I don't care who trains them. 
How dare you dirty the name of Stark Guard? Chapter 17 Thought everything was over when one of them confessed, but I was being naive. One of the fathers said, he might not have ambushed them, but it is a fact that he is not a squire yet, he is just a commoner recruit, and he assaulted noble-born squires. This can't go unpunished. We will punish the children for their lies, my lord, he needs to be punished too. Law says the punishment for assaulting a noble is ten flogging at the least. Roderick became as red as a tomato and started shouting at the fathers again. Assault is a crime punished by flogging. But lying to the Lord is not. Which one is the bigger one? Lying to the Lord is basically betrayal, which is punishable by death. Should we cut their heads? All of the children's faces become pale as ash. They started to turn and looked at their father with a face full of terror. Steward of Winterfell Vayan Pool comes close to the Lord and says, My Lord, I think the children shouldn't witness the rest of the argument. Should we take them out of the solar? Lord Stark looked at the frightened children and said, Yes, let them wait outside. Right as we were leaving the room, one of the fathers started shouting at Roderick. POV Ned Stark. How dare you call our children traitors? No, how dare you? You are trying to kill a child just because he is more talented than all of your children combined. Can you not look beyond your selfish needs? Can you not see if we train him right? We will be having the next Arthur Dane serve House Stark. My lord, if we are not punishing the other children, we can't punish him too. It is such a mess. Ermer acts so mature most of the time, I'm forgetting he is only six years old. Why did he have to fight them? He should have run or bowed down to not give them a reason until he had the power to stand by himself. Don't want to punish any of the children, but if I don't punish him, the minor nobles would be discontent. If I only punished him, nobles like Roderick would be discontent. So I have to punish both sides but... Have to make it look like Ermer is getting a harsher punishment. I get up from my chair and say, I have decided on their punishment. There? My lord, you mean all of them going to be punished? Yes, it is a matter of fact that Ermer attacked Nobleborn, but it is also a fact your children lied to me under oath, and they are the ones who assaulted him with the intent to maim. I'm going to be lenient because all of them are so young, and this is my punishment for them. They are to be held under house arrest for the next month. As for the commoner, Ermer Drazzle will be punished the same, but with one difference, he will only get two meals a day consisting of bread and water, nothing else. Some of them look a bit discontent, but they nod their head like they are trying to make themselves believe this is what they want. Now I want everyone but Roderick to go back to their post. You are dismissed. I turned to the guard at the door and said, Call Ermer inside. POV MC. When the guard called, I walked inside. The nobles were getting out of the solar, and they were smirking at me. It looks like they got what they wanted. I stood in front of the Lord's table, Roderick was standing right next to the table. Lord said, Do you know what you did wrong? I do not, my lord, all I did was defend myself. No, you didn't defend yourself. If you did, you would have retreated after defending. My lord, they were trying to break my arms, I couldn't just stand there and take the beating. Nobody expected you to take the beating, but I thought you were smarter, but it looks like you are not that smart. He strikes the table with his hand and stands up, then starts shouting at me, You are not a squire yet, you are not their equal, don't you know that? You cannot in no circumstances hit a noble. It looks like I spoiled you because of your talent and forgot your age. This is one of the bad parts of this world. I sometimes forget this world has aristocracy. I'm so angry because I'm about to get a punishment I don't deserve in my mind, but to every other noble, I most likely do. For a month, you are going to be under house arrest. You will not leave your room, and you are only going to get two meals a day consisting of bread and water. Now go and think about what you did wrong. I was squeezing my fists so hard I thought my nails broke the skin in my palms. I was so angry, not at the Lord or someone else. I was mad at myself. I'm too weak. I will show all of them. I'm going to climb to the highest peak I can climb. POV Ned Stark. Roderick. Yes, my lord. How good are the other six in their age group? I would say top ten, my lord. Ha ha ha, a six-year-old beating the living shit out of six ten-years-old squires that were training around four to five years. Ha ha ha. Roderick, I can't wait to see what he will do in the next ten years. I really want to see it. Roderick. I'm trusting you with this child. Don't screw it up. 
What was the name of that maid who took care of Ermer when his mother died? I believe she is called Breeze, my lord. Summon her right now. Chapter 18 280 AC POV Ned Stark When Roderick and a maid came into my solar, I was leaning on the wall and looking at the fireplace. They started waiting for me to speak to them. This child needs to be raised as a true North man. Should I take the permission I gave him to train on other things? Would it be better for his sword training? Roderick, what is Ermer doing with his free time, do you know? I saw him play with your sons and train his archery at the range, my lord. Other than that, people usually see him at Godswood or the library, my lord. Then the maid raises her hand, and I signal her to speak. My lord, I sometimes see him play with his ravens in his room. He has ravens. Yes, my lord, he found them in the Godswood as chicks and raised them. After hearing that, I thought he was still a child and needed playtime too. I sit down at my table and then look at the maid. I have punished Ermer for something, and he is to be locked in his room for a moon. At this time, he is to be fed only two times a day, consisting of bread and water, bringing his food to his room is going to be your responsibility. You cannot pass this responsibility on to someone else, this is your first priority for the moon. Of course, no one is going to open up the bread to see if there is meat inside of it. When I said that, her eyes grew with surprise. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, my lord. POVMC. When I reached my room, the soldiers stood in front of the building my room was in so that I wouldn't leave it. From now on, I have to be ready, I was too naive to think everything would be okay just because I have talent. No, in this world, status means talent, and status means power. So, I must reach higher and higher, but I must start somewhere. This made me realize I can't be content with only being a good swordsman. I have to be good at everything I do. I have to be the best at everything. I have to get powerful fast. The thing that will make me the most powerful is not the sword but the mana. I have to work on it more, but there is a drawback. The majority religion in this continent, the Seven, bans magic and declares it devil's work, so I must be careful about showing myself. I can't do magic out in the open until I'm percent 100 sure I can protect myself against them. I can't go to God's Wood to train for a month, but I can still use my most useless skill, infinite training skill. It is a pocket space of 4mx 4m room without anything inside, but at least I can use all the spells I want, and no one will know. But first thing first, I need to connect with Erebus. I come next to it and try to take him into my hand then he tries to bite me. Hey! Don't be an asshole. It has been a bad day already. When I get angry at it, and shout. He looks at me, raises his wings, and challenges me while cawing. Okay, then, I won't play with you, I will only play with Po. Come, Po, let's play. I got up from the chair, sat on the bed with Po, and played with her. Because my back is turned at Erebus, he can't see anything, and ravens are social and curious creatures. When he gets near me, I get up go to the other side of the room, ignore him, and only play with Poe. If I try to forcefully catch it and bond with it, it will resist. I don't have enough mana to make a forced connection with a raven. I think I would need, at the very least, 45 mana to make a forceful connection, and I only have 31 mana. I kept doing what I was doing for the next 2 to 3 hours, and Erebus kept getting angry about it. Ravens are really smart creatures. I think I heard in a documentary that they are as smart as two-year-olds. Some time later, Erebus came beside me and started pulling my clothes to get my attention. I turned to him and offered my hand again. This time he came closer to me and then jumped on top of my hand. After that, I held him in two hands and started bonding. This time I feel the mana move more smoothly, and I know what to do and when to do things. I love 5x, it is like I did many bondings. I even know why the first one took so long and spent so much mana. I spent at least 5 mana for no reason other than impatience. When Po pulled back, I should have waited a few seconds to let her adjust, but I never let that happen, so because of that, I spent more mana and more time pulling her back. This time I was patient. It ended at least several minutes early, and I spent 4 mana less. But I realized something I can't just keep bounding with other animals. My soul has a capacity, I can feel it. Right now, I don't have space for another creature. I would say my soul space is at percent 80. But I realized one more thing. I have close to three times better sight. As I thought, 
every connection provides me with a buff. Rest of the day I spent training my mana. First, I trained inside the space for around 3 hours because I could only stay there 6 hours a day. After spending all my mana, I needed to get out so I wouldn't waste my limited time inside. After that, I planned to take a nap to fill my mana. Then I went in again for 3 hours around the evening when I was getting ready for physical training so I wouldn't get rusty. Breeze comes inside the room, bringing me my food. Chapter 19 280 AC Sweetheart, are you okay? I don't understand why those nobles were bullying you. I start acting like an innocent child, saying, I really don't know, they keep bullying me. Then I acted like I remembered something then said, uh huh, maybe because I beat the living daylight out of them. She gets shocked for a second, then with a stern face, says. Sweetheart, you should never say something like that out loud, that is not smart. I know you are angry and have the right to be angry, but you can't talk or act like that. You need to suck it up and live your life. Small folk like us can't stand tall in front of nobles. They have all the power, if they can't hurt you, they will attack others around you. She comes next to me and messes my hair, then says. Please never do something like that, never stand up to them. You have to respect them even if you don't want to. Please don't do anything dangerous. I promised your mother I would look after you, so I will. She then puts the tray she is carrying in front of me after that, kisses me on the cheek. You must be doing something right if the Lord looks after you like this. I will take the tray when I come back for dinner. Bye. She messes with my hair again and then leaves the room. HMMPH is this how he looks after me, stale bread and water. I bit down on the bread then I felt something juicy and chewy. Then the flavor hits me. It has meat in it. I turn it over and look inside my bite, then reap it apart. A good chunk of meat is inside. Ah, uh -huh, she meant this by he is looking after. At least he has some conscience. After one month. This month, I worked on my mana the most and got two more mana. I think I'm starting to get more mana because I have two familiars now. I tested out some things. I'm not able to bind with more creatures, but I can dominate animals. It is not like being bound. I can't see with their eyes, give remote orders, or feel where they are if they are around 100 meters away from me. They will get free if I don't dominate them after a week or so. They can understand basic orders like attack, follow, retreat, etc., but the ravens and crows are exceptions. In some aspects, they are as smart as a two to four years old child. For example, crows understand analogies, exercise self-control, fashion tools, and like to play all signs of intelligence. Because of that, they can answer my short and simple questions with a nod, and I can use them to follow people because they can recognize people's faces. Now both Poe and Erebus have a murder of crows and ravens consisting of 15 to 20 birds. Technically it should be called unkindness since most of them are ravens, but I like the murder of crows and ravens more than the unkindness of raven and crow. People started to think it was an ominous omen that this many crows and ravens flocked around the buildings. They think this is a sign there is going to be ironborn or a wildling raid in a short time. In the old gods religion, they don't believe the ravens are ominous creatures but are still believed to be omen because they are carrion birds. The faith of the seven, the first raven, is said to have been let into the world when the crone peered through the door of death. Some priests of the Iron Islands believe that ravens are servants of the storm god. In short, people in this continent are a bit obsessed with ravens. The ravens are the best communication tools too. Maester Lewin is responsible for the communication between the lords, and I can't dominate his ravens, don't know why. I have been using all those ravens and crows for hunting small game. Even though lord lets me eat meat in secret, two meals a day is not enough for me because I train all day inside my room. I get hungry really fast so I send the birds at night, and they bring back the prey. I walked into Erebus and stole a knife from the kitchen, then made the other birds bring me dry woods from the god's wood. After that, when I entered the training space, I lit a small fire and cooked the meat. It is really bland, but it is better than hunger. I don't know why I don't get carbon poisoning inside the space. At first, I was afraid of it and did a little experiment to see if I would get lightheaded inside, but I never did. After that, I got out, did the same in the room, and breathed in the smoke. I got lightheaded, so I'm not resistant to carbon poisoning. Because I didn't use my mana training on elements, I think I hit a bottleneck with them. I used all my mana on warging. I learned this word from the Stark children's nanny old nan. 
When I needed to spend my mana, I would work to Poe or Erebus and fly sometimes, I would go to keep and listen to her tell stories. She tells many stories about the age of heroes, magic, and magical creatures to Rob, John, and Sansa. Sansa is Rob's little sister. She is four years old, and before I got punished, I talked and played with her sometimes. She is a charming and obedient little girl, she will not do something if Lady Catelyn forbids it. One time she played with us in a game of tag, and she would always get busted because she wouldn't run. I asked her why wouldn't she run, she told me while holding her head high, a lady never runs. She was so cute, that day, I held myself so hard not to pinch her little chubby cheeks. Chapter 20 280 AC People in this world call druids green seers, they have the most powers a druid would have but have something a druid wouldn't normally have, the thing they call green sight. Green sight is the ability to have prophetic dreams called green dreams. A person with green sight dreams like others, but the green dreams are different, filled with symbolic meaning, images, and metaphors of what is to come. The meaning behind the dream is not always obvious, but the dreamer experiences the fulfillment of visions in the unfolding of events. Supposedly these dreams can concern the dreamer or another person, but the dreamer will be able to tell the difference. Green seers might also dream of their own deaths. Wargs have been known to also possess this ability. I had never had a dream like that and didn't know if I would ever have any. The reason why I stopped working on my elements is I am not able to learn any new spells. I thought I could turn the shaking earth into some earthquake spell, but it did not. Almost all of my elemental spells become as big as 30 centimeters, one foot, in diameter. Even the windfall spell becomes something useful at close range. Now it has a decent knockback power, and I think it can even cause hairline fractures. Fireball becomes deadly, too, now, it can cause a small explosion when it makes contact with the target. Earthball and iceball only become 20 centimeters they wouldn't grow more, so I took a break from them and started focusing on familiar spells, sword training, and archery. I'm able to use chantless magic as I did in the Lord's Solar but for things like blowing wind, a little shake of the ground, and growing the fire. I call them cantrips, I'm not able to cast real spells without chance. Because the familiar bound gave me buffs, I had an inspiration. Can I create buff spells, too? So, I worked on that for a month and made two buff spells. I call them the aspect of the cat and the aspect of the bear. Basically, they are speed and strength buffs. They don't buff me that much, but it is a start. They only buff around 0.3 STR and SPD, respectively. It has been almost one and a half years since I started training in magic. Being able to create those buffs but not being able to use higher, more powerful spells made me realize something. Magic has three aspects. The first aspect is mana, you can't do anything without it. A caster would be no different than an average human, it is the fuel of every spell. The second aspect is control. This is the ability to control mana and being able to hold it inside one's body. This is what people would call magical talent. The last aspect is intent, it might look like the same thing as control, but it is not. I could move my mana around my body, or I might say the magic words, too, but if I don't want the magic to activate, it won't. Let's say a spell is a car, then the gas in its tank is mana, the road it travels on is the control, and the driver is the intent. Without all three of them, a car can't go from A to B smoothly without any damage, and the three aspects come from different places too. Mana comes from nature, control from the body, and the intent from the soul. If you think about it, it is very easy to deduce why I can't use higher spells. There are two possibilities either my control or my mana is lacking, and I believe it is the second one is lacking. I think I'm going to be able to use second level spells when I have enough mana. My connection with Poe and Erebus is getting stronger and stronger with every passing day. Now I'm able to talk with them, it isn't like a real conversation, more like feelings and visions. It is more advanced than my talks with dominated animals. As I got more mana, I discovered that my soul space was growing bigger. Before, connection with Poe and Erebus was taking percent 80 of my consciousness, but now it is around percent 78, I can't tell the difference, but authenticate can. My strength and speed grew by a small margin too. Now I have 1.6 STR, 1.7 SPD, and 33 mana. After my punishment ended, I continued to work on my mana the most. Every day would be spent almost the same. Three hours of mana training in the space, one hour physical training, two hour sword training, five hours of rest so I can fill my mana, again three hours of mana training in the space, 
then I would spend one hour in the archery range, lastly two hours in the library reading everything I can find in there. But I had to change my training schedule a bit when Rob and John came to me pouting because I wasn't playing with them anymore, so I had to play with him, every other day, I wouldn't do physical training and play with Stark children. I wouldn't sleep eight hours at night because I'm sleeping or meditating during the day. I would only sleep five hours and then wake up. Now that I have two loud alarm clocks, I can wake up whenever I want. All I had to do was buy a measuring candle and lit it before sleeping, then Po and Erebus would wake me up when it was finished. I decided to do this training as much as possible without giving any leeway. Once in a while, Roderick will come and get mad at me because I wasn't training in the sword as much as he liked, but I would always give him the same excuse. I would say I didn't want the same thing to happen again, and I didn't want to spar with the squires without being a squire myself. So, I would only train and spar with the recruits, but even the most talented recruits weren't a challenge to me if they weren't older than 11 years old. Now I was sparring with 4 to 6 recruits simultaneously, and I think some of the recruits were stronger than most of the squires. That is aristocracy for you. Thanks for listening.